Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, I don't know about you guys, but have any of you noticed how there seems to be a lot of DHT simps who are online? For some reason, the online manosphere, for lack of a better term, has bought into the notion that DHT is some sort of supreme alpha hormone, and if you suppress it in any ways, with finasteride or dutasteride, you are sacrificing your very masculinity. If you go anywhere online and ask about finasteride or lowering DHT through some other mechanism, they then you're bound to have at least a few internet tough guys get in your face about it and call you a beta bitch for wanting to suppress what they like to call the most powerful androgen in the body and that using finasteride is the equivalent of chemical castration or something. Anyways, some of these men, they really go so far out of their way to project their masculinity that it's to the point where it makes them seem insecure in their own sexual orientation, but whatever their intentions may be, it is clear that a large chunk of online dude bros have made DHT part of their very identity. It makes you wonder, why is it that so many men have such a strong emotional attachment to the hormone DHT? They act like they're so tough by avoiding a 5 air inhibitor like finasteride since they're preserving more of their DHT, the hormone that makes them such un stoppable badasses, but beneath that rough and abrasive exterior they like to present online lies a soft, squishy, and downright cowardly interior because what they will never admit is that the reason they simp so hard for DHT is because they are afraid. They don't want to use finasteride because they're too dickless to do what needs to be done in order to save their hair, so they have to convince themselves that DHT is important in order for them to cope with their decision not to take finasteride. The more people they can bully into their point of view, the more they can feel their own cowardice and DHT simping is justified. Just think about it. Why is it that these internet dwellers care so much about what other people decide to put into their own body? Why is it that they go so far out of their way to convince as many people as possible that finasteride is a dangerous drug? Are they doing it to help others? Of course not. Why would they? They don't know you or give a damn about you or anyone else. They're doing it for their own sake because the more people who buy into their delusions about DHT's importance in the body or finasteride's danger as a drug, the more secure they become in their own failures to save their hair. If you look past the posturing of these internet bro scientists and look at the actual science behind DHT's role in the body though, you will see that past early adolescent development, there is absolutely no role that DHT plays in the body that testosterone cannot already do significantly better. That is because even though DHT is technically a more potent hormone than testosterone, DHT's effects on the body is paracrine and not not endocrine like testosterone, meaning that DHT works only on select tissues where it is produced, like the skin, prostate, and scalp, where of course it only does bad things like give us acne, enlarge our prostate, and of course cause hair loss. Not only that, DHT has also been shown to have an adverse effect on our cardiovascular health, which can shorten our lives. DHT isn't like testosterone, which makes us strong and virile men. Serum DHT levels are far too low to have any effect in the body comparable to what testosterone can do, and that is because DHT is a trash hormone. There are many, many reasons as to why DHT is a trash hormone, and that is why this video is actually a part 5 in my DHT is a trash hormone video series. I highly recommend watching all the previous videos before watching this one, because there is a very good chance that any question or objection you may have about DHT being a trash hormone will have already have been addressed in my previous videos on the subject. But to sum up my findings, there is nothing DHT can do that testosterone can't already do better. And unlike testosterone, DHT can contribute to heart disease, which I discussed specifically in my part 4 video in my DHT is a trash hormone series, which again is all linked below. It turns out, though, that upon further researching DHT's devastating effects on the human organism, it goes beyond just cardiovascular health. It turns out that DHT also may make you stupid. It's ironic how everybody seems to be worried about the effect of finasteride or dutasteride on the brain. Every time it gets brought up, you always have some neckbeard who will cry out bullshit like, But my neurosteroids! It is all BS, of course, and I have an entire video series on finasteride and neurosteroids that I'll link below, but the reason why I bring this up is because as it turns out, it is not finasteride that hurts the brain, it is DHT that hurts it. How is this possible, you may ask? Well, there is already overwhelming evidence that the trash hormone DHT causes baldness, acne, heart disease, and an enlarged prostate, but it gets even worse than that though. You see, DHT also has a bad effect on, and you're going to be surprised to hear me say this, 
Blutflu! No, I'm not talking about Blutflu to the scalp or anything that would lead to hair loss. I debunked the Blutflu theory many, many times, and I'll link some videos on that specific subject below if you're interested. What I'm talking about, though, is much more important than Blutflu to the scalp. I'm talking about Blutflu to the brain itself. Now, keep in mind that this research on blood flu to the brain is still preliminary as we speak, and it's just based on some rodent study at the moment, but this study nevertheless opens up some very, very serious questions about just how bad of a trash hormone DHT is in adults, and it actually could be even worse than we thought it was. The study I'm going to go over shows that DHT can cause inflammation and constriction of arteries that supply blood to the brain. That's nothing to take lightly here, Chooms, because those kind of problems with those critical arteries can lead to atherosclerosis and stroke. This may be more than a theory too, homies, because it is well known that many diseases like heart disease and neurological diseases like Parkinson's disease are worse in men than they are in women. The same thing is true about having a stroke. Strokes due to cerebrovascular disease are more common in men than they are in women, as you can see in this graph here, and this is one of the many reasons why men on average have a shorter lifespan than women. If you look at the top 10 oldest people, not one of them is a man, which sucks because I want to live long enough to get the nasty on with some blue alien chicks from Alpha Centauri. In all seriousness though, with all these types of horrible diseases that are male dominant, there's a good chance that the reason for the increased incidence in these effects in men is due to the harmful effect of androgens or due to the protective effect of estrogens, or maybe it's a combination of both factors. It sucks to think that just being a man itself is a risk factor for developing so many life-threatening diseases and that these risks are endocrinological in nature. Now, if androgens are, are in fact the thing that's causing the harm, the question is, is it testosterone circulating around the body that is causing the problems, or is it really just the trash hormone DHT? So, in terms of the chemical composition between testosterone and DHT, dihydrotestosterone, they are very similar. The main difference between testosterone and DHT, though, is that testosterone is an endocrine hormone, meaning it circulates throughout the bloodstream and has its effects in areas remote from where it is synthesized in the gonads, like its effects on muscle growth. DHT on on the other hand, is a paracrine hormone, meaning it has its effects in the same tissue or close to the same tissues where it is synthesized by the 5-AR enzyme. So that is why serum DHT levels do not mean anything, and there is no point in getting blood work to measure DHT levels. It's not serum DHT levels that are important. It is the local DHT in the scalp or prostate that causes problems, and these local levels are not easy to measure. Blood DHT does not reflect the local DHT levels in the tissue, so please, guys, stop getting blood work before or while taking finasteride. There is no blood marker that will predict how well you will respond to treatment or predict the incidence of side effects, so it is completely pointless. But getting back onto the subject. We all know that DHT sucks for the hair and prostate, of course, so let's get back to the brain and the arteries that supply blood to the brain, which are called the cerebral arteries. The study that we're going to look at that examines the effects of DHT on those local arteries in the brain is titled, quote, Dihydrotestosterone stimulates cerebrovascular inflammation through NF-kappa-B modulating contractile function, unquote. So, like I said, this was a rat study looking the, at the effect of DHT on the arteries supplying blood to the brains of rats. Previous studies have shown that testosterone can decrease blood flow in these arteries and can cause inflammation, which makes strokes worse. On the other hand, estrogen improves blood flow in the brain and reduces inflammation. However, the data on testosterone is not consistent. Not all studies show that testosterone worsens a stroke. For example, in this study of men who had strokes, men who had higher testosterone levels did better than those who had lower levels. This figure here shows that men who died from their strokes, represented by the gray bars right here, had lower total and free testosterone levels than men who survived, represented by the white bars. So the effect of testosterone is not consistent or clear. In some studies, it increases inflammation, which is bad for a stroke, of course, but in other studies, it seems to protect stroke victims from bad outcomes. So despite these inconclusive outcomes, you may think that it is at least possible that testosterone might be part of the problem. Well, the researchers who wrote the paper we are looking at on DHT thought that the reason for this discrepancy in the effects of testosterone on these blood vessels was that testosterone was being metabolized by both 5-AR and aromatase in the blood vessels themselves, resulting in DHT and estrogen being created. Because keep in mind, the aromatase enzyme is what converts testosterone into estrogen. If, testo if testosterone was metabolized into estrogen, that would have a protective effect because estrogen reduces inflammation, which is why aromatase-inhibiting drugs like Arimidex can control 
contribute to heart disease and stroke. On the other hand, DHT was having an opposite effect, causing increased inflammation and worse strokes. Because remember, DHT cannot aromatize into estrogen. In a previous study, the same researchers showed that the blood vessels to the brain contained both 5-AR and aromatase. In fact, here are two figures right here showing that both 5-AR and aromatase are present in the brain blood vessels. It's interesting that the 5-AR isoenzyme in the brain blood vessels was actually the type 2 isoenzyme, which is blocked by both finasteride and dutasteride. It is not the type 1 isoenzyme, which is the isoenzyme found in the actual brain tissue. This is important to mention because if DHT causes inflammation of these blood vessels, finasteride could counteract that inflammation. But more on that a little bit later. Anyways, Based on the presence of 5-AR in the brain arteries, the investigators wondered whether it was in fact DHT, which was the only villain here, and not testosterone at all. Well, it turns out that the researchers found that DHT activates a cellular signaling pathway called NF-kappa-B, as you can see in this figure from the paper here. This NF-kappa-B pathway is a very complicated pathway, but the end result of activating it is increased inflammation. Indeed, two well-known inflammatory proteins named COX-2 and and INOS were activated by DHT, and the effect was blocked with the androgen receptor blocker called flutamide, which you can see in this figure right here. Now, not only that, it turns out DHT increased the constriction of these arteries, which is not a good thing in the brain, of course, as increased constriction causes decreased blood flow in the brain, which increases the risk for a stroke. So, it's worth quoting the end of the article here. Quote, in summary, activation of the NF-kappa-B-mediated COX-2 INOS pathway by androgens such as DHT elicits a state of vascular inflammation independent of cytokine or any other outside inflammatory stimulus. Clinically, the effects of androgens on pro-inflammatory enzymes may contribute to further worsening of the detrimental influence of androgenic stimulation on ischemic brain injury. This is critical because the impact of cerebrovascular inflammation is highly relevant during uh, pathophysiological conditions related to to endothelial dysfunction, oxidative stress, hypoxia, and stroke. Taken together, this data suggests that in young adults who choose to use androgen supplementation recreationally or for performance enhancement, predisposition for the onset of inflammation may be increased with significant possible consequence for the development of both cerebral and cardiovascular disease." Unquote. So Chooms, the bottom line here is that once again, DHT is proven to be shown to be a trash hormone since it's able to cause inflammation and constrict blood vessels in our brain, at least in this rat model, but if these blood vessels had the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme, wouldn't finasteride possibly be helpful in preventing damage from strokes since that is the isoenzyme that finasteride predominantly blocks? Well, I thought this was just speculation on my part, but then I found this preem article right here titled, quote, the 5A reductase inhibitor finasteride exerts neuroprotection against ischemic brain injury in aged male rats, unquote. So in this extremely interesting study, the researchers felt that finasteride, because of its effects on neurosteroids, might make artificially induced strokes in rats worse. Remember, in rats, finasteride blocks both the type 1 and the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme, unlike in human beings where it blocks the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme, and these rat studies are where a lot of the misconceptions about finasteride and neurosteroids come from, as I discussed in my neurosteroid videos on finasteride that are all linked below. So unlike in humans, finasteride actually does have an effect on brain neurosteroids. So it's a good thing we're not rats or mice, even though everything here is hair loss in them. What these investigators found that was very interesting was that finasteride by itself prevented brain damage in aged animals with artificially induced strokes. The investigators wrote, quote, Unexpectedly, finasteride alone showed a significant reduction in neuronal damage 72 hours after middle cerebral artery occlusion in aged male rats." Unquote. So if you look at this figure right here, you see the results of how the rats did after their artificially induced stroke on a coordination test called a Rotterod test. The bottom line shows the rats who had a stroke and were then given a placebo. Those rats did poorly on the test. The top two lines almost look the same, but the open circles are the finasteride-treated stroke rats, and the closed circles are the rats who had a sham operation, meaning they never even had a stroke to begin with. As you can see here, the finasteride-treated stroke rats were about as coordinated as rats who never had a stroke. In addition to this, these improvements in neuronal function and decreases in neuronal damage were blocked when finasteride was given along with the androgen receptor blocker flutamide, which proves that this effect of finasteride was due to specifically DHT and had nothing at all to do with neurosteroids like allopregnanolone. The only thing slightly odd about this study was that the effect was only seen in older rats and not in young rats. However, the researchers concluded, quote, 
In the present study, we found for the first time that six-hour post-ischemic administration of the 5A reductase inhibitor finasteride protected neurons in the striatum and cerebral cortex and prevented the impairment of rotarod performance after focal cerebral ischemia in aged male rats, but not young ones. Unquote. The investigators felt that finasteride might be even a better drug for fighting strokes than the clot-busting drug called TPA, which is currently the gold standard for treatment in people who show up to the emergency room after having had a stroke. And based on the other study I went over earlier, the reason finasteride might work is that it blocks the creation of DHT in the cerebral arteries, thus improving blood flow and reducing inflammation. So what I presented here shows yet another of the many reasons why DHT is a trash hormone, and that is because it can worsen strokes, which is why a drug like finasteride that lowers DHT might actually become a treatment for strokes if human studies confirm this rodent research, which would be fantastic news for the human race since strokes are one of the biggest killers of the human species right now on the planet, right behind heart disease in fact, which as I discussed in my previous video, is also caused in part by the trash hormone DHT. So I know sometimes it is really hard to believe that a hormone that is produced in everybody can have no beneficial role past early early adolescence. I mean, how is it that we keep on producing a hormone like DHT when all it does is bad things to us? Well, truth be told, guys, nature is not perfect. Evolution doesn't necessarily favor perfect traits. It just favors traits that let us live long enough so that we can pass on our genes. Diseases like heart disease and stroke progress at a slow enough pace that they still let us live long enough to pass on those traits to our offspring. What makes things especially bad for us hair loss witchers, though, who are suffering from androgenic alopecia, is that we have more 5 air activity on our scalp and thus higher DHT levels than people who do not have androgenic alopecia. So, when when you are taking finasteride, you are not just making an investment into saving your hair and confidence, you are very likely prolonging your life as well. That is because DHT isn't just a hair destroying hormone, it is a life destroying hormone. The majority of people who are alive today will one day die of a cardiovascular related condition like heart disease or a stroke, both of which are worsened by DHT. So when DHT simps try to bully you out of taking finasteride, they're not just telling you to give up on your hair, they're telling you to give up on your life. You don't deserve that. Let them wallow in their filth and misery as they type on their Cheeto dust stained keyboard about how finasteride is poison and nobody should take it. You deserve to live a long life to the fullest with a full head of hair and so long as you trust the science and ignore the fear mongering online, then your only regret will be that you didn't start treatment sooner. See you next time, Chooms. God bless.